guys, welcome to another episode of the story behind the photograph. Today we're going to be talking about this photograph right here. This is a Milky Way picture over the Tetons from the west side. So I call this the Bifrost over the Tetons is the title of that photograph. And this is a fun one. This is a kind of a longer story, so strap into your seats. Turn the volume up, put the kids to bed, and enjoy the story behind the photograph. So this, this story started September 2014. I went on a trip up to the Tetons with a couple of buddies, Ian Cox and John Hart. We went on a little man road trip up there for a, for a fall fall trip up to the Tetons. And I'll tell you, the middle of September is a perfect time to go up to the Tetons. We shot around the Tetons. We shot some Milky Way stuff. We, we stayed out pretty late at night. <clears throat> a couple of the nights shooting the Milky Way, we shot some, took some pictures over over Grand Teton Lake. That's I'm going to save that for another podcast. I'll probably get into that. I'll probably have those guys on as a guest. So anyways, the story starts with that trip. We were we were camped on the on the um, uh, across the valley from the uh, from the Tetons. So I uh, we got some pretty good Milky Way shots, but I wasn't, you know, I I was kind of tired of the same Milky Way shots that I've always seen. I'm always trying to um, get different perspectives, different angles, different views of iconic locations. And so I thought to myself, I think on the probably on the, either the drive home or afterwards, or I was editing the photos or whatever, and I thought, you know, I want to get a Milky Way shot of the Tetons with the Milky Way arching over the Tetons. So as I was thinking about that, I, I got home and I was doing some research and using some apps that I've got, and I found the time to do that would be in June. So if you guys know anything about the Tetons, they're very high elevation. And they have snow on them year-round. And so doing it in June r would require either a, a, a low snow year as well as um, just hiking in snow. I think it's there's no way around it. And so a, as I was doing some research, I found that uh, a mountain just to the west of the Tetons called Table Mountain would be the best location for, for doing this picture, for taking this shot. And so that was the plan. And I had that planned out for a month or two. And I reached out to a couple of friends that I knew would be, would be up for some backpacking overnight. And um, uh, my buddy from high school, Trent Longhurst, um, was in. And my, my brother, my younger brother Spud, was actually going to come with us too. But he had to bail out. I think that year was the year that he broke his neck. So he decided to bail out was, um, at the last, not really the last minute, but a few months before. But yeah, you break your neck, you can't really do backpacking. So I, I let him off the hook on that one. So uh, um, yeah, so Trent and I headed up um, and we planned on doing about a th two, let's see, two night, three day trip. So it would be, we left uh, Thursday night and we drove up to uh, the Tetons, the, to the backside. And we camped there at the, at the, uh, at the campground uh, that first night, Thursday. And we got up early Friday and hiked in. So in the parking lot to, to hike in, we, we met some old ladies that were actually training uh, for doing some some crazy long hike, I don't know, like the Pacific Crest Trail or some some crazy hike, and so they were doing a, a practice train, a practice hike, and so they had this loop that they were going to do that was like I don't know five or eight or ten miles that day, and so they had they actually had weighted backpacks, and these ladies were, I think one of them was like seventy five, one was like seventy nine or something, so they were getting up there and they were in pretty darn good shape, so. Um, they certainly put Trent and I in a shame as far as, uh, as far as, uh, endurance. So, um, we're, we're hiking along this trail and it's just beautiful. This is an absolutely gorgeous trail. If you ever get a chance to hike to Table Mountain, do it. It is just a beautiful trail. 
you hike along uh, a creek or a river there, and it's just beautiful, especially in the summertime. Everything's green. You'll see wildlife everywhere. We saw deer. We saw moose. And the first moose that we came upon, he was, it was a, a bull moose. And I'll share a photo here if you guys are watching. And he was literally standing in the uh, over the trail. And we came around this little rock, kind of like this rock uh, outcropping, came around the trail, and he was right there. He was 15 yards from us at most. And he just kind of looked up at us, and we were like, back up, back up, go back slowly. So we kind of just backed up behind this rock, and, and he really didn't care at all that we were there. And so these ladies come up a little bit behind us. We started a little before them, and so they they cut up to us, and we were... And they were talking, talking away as, as ladies do. And we kind of sh- shushed them and said, hey, there's a, there's a big bull moose on the trail right around, this, right around this corner. And they're like, oh, cool. Yeah, we'll see lots of moose. There's tons of them up here. So they come around this trail, and the one lady just starts clapping and hollering. She's like, get out of here. Go on, man, let's go by. And, and we're like, we're looking at each other like, who the heck is this lady? And we're like, and the moose just kind of like looked at her and was like, oh, okay. And then moseyed on into the trees. And we were like, what did that lady just do? And we're like, you're nuts. And she goes, oh, no, the bull moose, they don't care about, about uh, people right now. They're just, uh, they're just eating. That's what they do right now. They're just eating. So in the rut, you know, in the, the mating season, that's when you need to worry about the bull moose, but not right now. So we we were just like totally taken back by these ladies just chewing off this big bull moose. It was hilarious. So we hike on a little bit more and we uh, come across another bull moose. Uh, I don't think I got any pictures of it. It was uh, kind of off in the trees, but uh, that was cool. So um, we we hiked on. Um, it was uh, I think it was three or four miles I believe up to where we were going to camp for the night. And uh, so we get. So we get going. We're hiking up there, and it's uh, if you ever hike, uh, you know, in the in the um, early summer in high elevations, there's a lot of water, a lot of mud, and a lot of snow, little snow patches. So, um, and my buddy Trent, he was dealing with a sprained ankle. He'd sprained an ankle doing something, and so he was kind of nursing that. I think he had it wrapped. He may not have, um, but he was, you know, hitting the ibuprofen pretty hard to to be able to hike, and so he was. I mean, that that hike up was, was I know it was pretty tough on him. Um, but we got up, we made camp, and just kind of chilled for a little bit in the afternoon. Then we decided, it was probably, I don't know, 1 or 2 o'clock, and we decided, let's uh, let's head up to Table Mountain for sunset. So we still had, I think, two or two and a half miles up to, to Table Mountain. We thought, oh, we can knock that out, no problem, an hour, hour and 15 minutes max, you know. And so we start hiking, and um, we get up, and we just get uh, up to the top of these switchbacks to where you're basically just hiking straight up to Table Mountain. It's a, it's a pretty steady incline. It's not too steep, but it was, it was a pretty good incline. And being in the summer, it was quite warm during the day. It was probably in the 50s. 60s maybe 70s during the day so and there's still a lot of snow up on top here so we're hiking in pretty much slush it is just slushy and if you've ever hiked in sand uh, slush is much worse than sand so um, yeah it was just it was just slow going it our feet were soaking wet um, and it was it was pretty warm and then it was pretty cold because the wind and the breeze was cold and and it was kind of miserable hiking conditions, but it was beautiful. The scene was awesome. We got up and probably, I don't know, an hour and a half, two hours before sunset, we got up there and it was super windy up on top, up on Table Mountain. And so we kind of hunkered down on the north north face of Table Mountain, which is more or less just a like a butte on top of this, kind of on top of the mountain, across from, uh, from the, the Teton Peaks. So we get up there and we kind of hunker down in this little uh, rock shelter, not really a cave, but just kind of a covering because it was really windy. We made up some dinner, ate some dinner. We had this marmot come and it was just chattering at us. And it was, I think it's how home was right there. 
and it was not happy that we were right there cooking food uh, right in front of its home. So it was chattering at us. It, it was getting a couple feet away from us, and it was not scared of us at all. And and uh, so that was kind of a cool experience to have that guy just chattering at us. So as the night goes on, we uh, after we ate, we decide, all right, let's go out and we'll get some sunset pictures. I had uh, we hiked around uh, kind of on this ridge of Table Mountain to the north of it and just took some pictures. Or, I'll show some here uh, in the video to kind of show you what, what the view was like. But it was absolutely gorgeous. It was literally like on top of the world. And I can only imagine a Teton Peak was another, I don't know, 800,000 feet above where we were. Maybe not that much, but it's several hundred feet above in elevation where, where we are at. And we felt like we were on top of the world, so it was pretty cool. Um, the sunset was pretty good. There was some nice soft light. Some clouds kind of covered uh, the sun, and we had some nice pink light. A few clouds hovering over to the north of the Tetons. I'll share some pictures here so you guys can enjoy those. And then we waited for the stars to come out. So we waited a little bit, and it was cold, and it was super windy. So the stars come out, and we start taking pictures, and I got a bunch of different compositions. I did some panos, and the uh, the pano that you, sh that you see here, it was taken a little, just a hair before total darkness. So there's a little blue tint, blue uh, uh, color to the photograph, and it was just absolutely amazing to be standing on this ridge and seeing the Milky Way above the Tetons. It was exactly how I pictured it would be when I envisioned that photograph six months or um, ten months earlier before when I had that idea to shoot, to photograph the t above the Tetons from the west side. So I was really happy with how, how, the, how the image turned out in my head and it, it was like, uh, like I said, it was just like I envisioned it. The only thing I'm not happy with this was I was using a newer lens to me and I was still trying to figure out where the focus was uh, on the lens. It's a manual focus lens and I kind of missed focus on it. So the stars are a little soft, but overall I really love this photo. I would love to get back up there and do it again to get those sharp, uh, stars uh, super pinpoint sharp, but maybe this year I'll get up there. So this is, that's the story behind this photograph, but the story doesn't end there because there's a lot more to the story here. So after we got our pictures, we we shot around a bunch, and Trent was was new to photography, so I was helping him shoot. He was actually borrowing um, my, one of my old Nikon lenses, a Tokina 11 to 16. So we we got our pictures, and we started hiking back down, and when snow melts during the day and then it gets freezing at night, it turns to ice, right? So we're hiking down and the the snow, if you've ever hiked on a glacier or, or snow uh, that's been that's been trekked on, it's very uneven. It's not it's not like uh, hard packed snow. It's like snow that's got dips and waves and just footprints all over the place and it's pretty tough. It's pretty tough on your ankle. So Trent was, uh, I think he was really having a hard time uh, hiking down with a, in the in the snow, or the ice, I should say, uh, with his ankle and that. But uh, we made it down. We started hiking back down, and as we got back down, I looked back up the trail, and you see Table Mountain. And so I was like, oh, this is a cool, cool composition. So I took this uh, panoramic photo of the Milky Way above, Table Mountain. So this, I actually almost like this photo more because I I got the the stars in focus a little better on this one. Um, but I I I um, really happy with how this one turned out with the with the mountain uh, kind of centered be be uh, below the Milky Way there. So continuing on, we go hiking down and we made some really good time back down the mountain because it was. It was icy, so we were kind of almost skiing down a lot of the ways, but it was also very sketchy because it was it was icy, you know. And so we get down, and we come to a couple of parts on the trail where it switchbacks. We we where we we're hiking, we get off the ridge, and we start hiking down into where our camp was. 
and we're kind of across these switchbacks. And uh, on that part, there was there was patches of snow, patches of ice at this time, and then there was trail. And so there was a couple there was a couple spot. One spot in particular was just the 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 trail was so steep and that snow just continued that that slope but the you know but the trail we, uh was was going across that so we had to cross this icy icy trail and it was probably i don't know maybe 20 30 feet 20 20 25 feet but it was almost like sure ice we'd like step on it and test it out and it was just like way slippery and below us was was nothing it was like cliff it was because we were up at the very top and so we had a cut across and the trail switch back down and there was it was cliffs there so it was probably i don't know i'd I'd have to look at it but it was probably 50 to 100 feet of cliff so if we slid off that we were we were toast we were going off the cliff so we uh kind of used uh i think we used tripod poles and whatever else we could find to like dig our way across that and we kind of we kind of ran across it almost i think was the best was the best route we kind of got a footing and then just tore across that and and it was super sketchy and so we got down a little bit further down went down uh down a couple switchbacks and as we're hiking uh we we both started noticing uh, a bunch of footprints the dog footprints and we were kind of like i was kind of like well that's kind of weird i don't remember seeing anybody else um you know come up and we didn't see the dog footprints on the way on the way up but they were for some pretty large dog and there was a lot of them so i started looking at it and i noticed there were that's my cat that just walked in front of me for you you guys watching the video so sorry about that so i noticed there was some deer tracks and then there was a bunch of dog footprints and i started looking at them going these aren't dog footprints. These are wolves. These have to be wolves. These are huge. I mean, they were big, big footprints. And there was these, and there were deer footprints. And it was, and you could tell that the dog footprints follow the deer footprints. And so it, and it went off and we, we tried to follow it a little bit, but it went off the trail a little ways. And, and so we're looking at each other going, dude, this, this happened when we were up there and there was wolves chasing down a deer while we were up there and so we were kind of and it's dark you guys it was two o'clock in the morning 2 30 in the morning and so we're kind of like on edge now we're like super nervous and i had bear spray and trent had uh, a handgun that he packed with him and so he's like okay gun goes from the pack to the hip so um so we're hiking down and you know, as it happened, I was I was pretty nervous. But then I started thinking, well, you know, the the wolves probably got the deer, so they've eaten. And wolves can move really far, so they're probably miles away, full stomachs, totally content, somewhere off, uh, you know, three four miles away, a couple rain, uh, ridges away or something. So as we hiked more and more, I kind of comforted myself with that thought that they've got full bellies and they're gone. And we're humans, we'll make noise. And so we were whistling and talking loud and stuff, but we were still spooked. And in my head, as we're hiking down, we're getting a little closer to the camp, to the campsite. We're a couple hundred yards away. And in my head, I was thinking this right before we got to our camp. I was thinking, you know, I'm not so worried about the wolves now. They were headed south away from our camp. But if we come across bear tracks, I'm going to be worried. Now that's going to really put me on edge because we're getting pretty close to camp and I really don't want a bear hanging around our camp at night with us in the tent. That's like one of my biggest fears. So we're maybe 100 yards away from camp at this point. And we go across this. There was one snow patch that went across the trail and it was a pretty it was a pretty big snow patch. And we crossed it earlier and we were the there was maybe one set of footprints uh, before us and when we crossed it, what did we see? Bear tracks. And I know for a fact that those bear tracks were not there when we went up because like I said, we were the only ones, or maybe another one other set of footprints and the tracks, the bear tracks were going across the track, across the snow, across our footprints. And so that's when Trent had his gun out and he was like, we were both spooked, we were, I was whistling 
and hollering and stuff and hay bearing and all kinds of stuff and trying to make noise and spook the bear off and whatever else. But so we got back to back to our camp and we had taken precautions. We hung our we hung our food up in up in a tree, you know, out off of a branch and we had and it was away from our camp a little ways and I w- I felt, you know, if if we see bear tracks down around our our, our tent and stuff, then I'm going to be like not sleeping at all that night. And um, there was no tracks around our food. There was no tracks. We kind of walked around our camp, and there was no. And there was a couple of few patches of snow here and there, and we didn't see any tracks. And so, after a while, we kind of calmed down, and we made sure, uh, you know, we took all the food out of our pack, and and put everything up, and made sure there was nothing in our tent that smelled or anything like that. And we went to bed. And I I actually slept okay once I. Once I calmed myself down, I said a little prayer in my in my tent. I said, "Please don't let us get eaten by a bear." We woke up. Uh, I actually went to sleep pretty good, and um, I I slept okay. I mean, I didn't sleep a lot because we were up. I mean, it was probably three three thirty in the morning when when I ended up going to sleep. But woke up with the sunrise, maybe seven thirty eight o'clock the next morning, and got up and was like. Hey, we're still alive. This is great. We didn't get attacked by a bear. This is awesome. So we got up and uh, got out of the camp or got out of the tent, went to go check the food bag and uh, went and filled up some water at the stream nearby there. We were, we were camped uh, near a stream. And so I just went over and started filling up the my water with uh, with a purifier. And I'm there's little snow patches along the bank of the, the stream here. And I looked down, and what do you see? What do you know? Bear tracks. And I thought, okay, well, that was either there before or it came last night. But I'm we're we're surrounded. We're right in the middle of bear country. So, um, you know, we were we had our head heads on a swivel pretty much all day, whistling and and always had either the gun or bear spray right with us at all times. But as I was getting my uh, my camera bag out of the tent, which I used for my pillow, I um, uh, opened up one of the top zippers and a granola bar fell out. And a granola bar that had been open that I was eating early in the night fell out. And so I had food in the tent with me uh, <laughs> all night long. So I was really fortunate. I was really glad that I didn't get... Uh, eaten by a bear that night because that uh, granola bar I'm sure probably would have smelled great to a bear so um, when that fell out I was like we both looked at each other like oh my gosh are you serious we're so dang lucky that that a bear didn't come into our tent last night looking for some food so that was the uh, kind of the bear scare um, that night so we we still had one more night so that day we kind of uh, just kind of relaxed and hung around. Trent for Trent went for um, kind of like a, a nature hike. He wanted to go connect with nature, so he went off and kind of meditated uh, for a couple hours during the day. I went and found uh, some cool spots and did some time lapse. I'll show you guys here if you're watching the video. I'll share that time lapse um, and just kind of wandering around, t- taking pictures and and trying out different, uh, see, looking at different uh, views around. Uh, around the area that we were camping and to find out to see if there was a, maybe a better place to put our tent um, because the spot we were at was uh, was kind of wet so it was um, not the best not the best spot and there was no place to do a fire either uh, because it was so wet and it was um, th- there was no rocks for it so we actually scouted out another spot and we ended up moving our tent up to up a little bit higher and found a nice little ridge and a place where we could have a fire. There was already a fire pit there, so we were able to have a fire that night. We were able to find some dry wood. But uh, so again, we had our we had our bear bag um, hung up in the tree. We uh, just kind of hung out during the day, walked around, hiked around, and um, came back to our our bear bag um, for dinner to get some food. And guess what was underneath the bear the bear bag? You got it, bear tracks. And so we were like, and I really, you know, I wasn't, I was, 
scared of a bear, but I really, at this point in my life, I'd never seen a bear in the wild. So I was actually really excited to see a bear. And that was one of my goals was to see a bear in the wild. And so I had a, I had a long lens that I could uh, take pictures of this bear with. So I was totally fine if the bear was 100 yards away or 200 yards away or whatever. I had a telephoto lens. and But I kind of really wanted to see a bear. So I was like, this bear is like stalking us or something. So I kind of like follow the tracks for a little bit and it ended up going off uh, up some ridge or whatever. And I was like, okay, well, I can't follow it anymore. So... Um, yeah, so that night we uh, we ate. The sunset was okay. I took some. I kind of took some pictures of of uh, just kind of around around the the tent and stuff and around camp. Um, sunset wasn't great. It was overcast. Night was overcast. Um, so we went to bed and slept slept pretty good. No issues with bears or any wildlife or anything. Woke up the next morning packed up our stuff and started hiking out. So this was a Sunday morning. So we're hiking out and um, we're feeling pretty good. It was a good trip. I got the Milky Way pictures that I wanted. Um, got some nice sunset pictures up on, on Table Mountain of the Tetons and looking to the west and north and south. And so it was, it was a pretty good trip overall and really excited about getting back and getting pictures edited. So we're hiking down. And we uh, get down to kind of some meadow areas where there where we had seen some moose on our way up, and we saw a um, the Trent was a little ways ahead of me, because I was uh, pick, taking pictures and different things, and and so he he uh, comes kind of hurrying back up the trail, and he's like, shh, there's a there's a there's a cow and a calf moose up here. So we got to be quiet. It perked up its head and it was staring at me. So I'm kind of worried about it because a couple, you know, the two days before when those ladies were like, ah, oh, the bull moves aren't, you don't have to worry about them. It's the cows with their calves. They have to worry about those are the ones that'll, that'll get you. They'll, they'll come right after you. So, and these, and this cow and this calf was several hundred yards off. I mean, it was across the meadow. We could barely see it. I don't think I, I don't even think I got a decent picture of it because it was so far away. But it was perked up, and it was it was laser beamed on us, like watching us, and so we're kind of hiking hiking slowly and and uh, try not to um, you know startle this moose. Uh, we we hike on. And that was kind of cool. We hike a little bit further. We end up seeing a coyote, so I got a picture of a coyote kind of running away from us. And we hike on a little bit further, and we see another cow and a calf moose. And this time it was down to the south of us and it was again it was 100 150 yards away and it was right on the edge of a meadow and then there was a grove of aspen trees and so we were hiking into the aspen trees and there on the on the uh, as we're hiking into it there was some some low bush or like willow type uh, um, uh, trees right there off the side of the trail and so we're hiking and we're looking to the left keeping an eye on this on this moose and this and the calf, you know, making sure she doesn't come charging at us. So we're keeping our eyes to the left and off to the right. We spook something. I think it was a deer in in the uh, in the bushes there. And so we spook something and it took off and it kind of startled us and it took off running. It was like whoa, that was scary. And so we uh, hike and we get into this this grove of of the quakies here, and uh, and so we both we kind of both looked left at the same time. And Mama Moose was coming up at us. She was running through those aspens, and uh, Trent goes, Trent goes, gun, and I said, yeah, run. And so we both just took off running. We're carrying 30, 35, 40 pound packs, and we were sprinting. No lie, we were sprinting as fast as probably as I've ever ran before. And remember, Trent's got a sprained ankle, but we were cooking. We were just hauling out of there. Nothing strikes fear into you like seeing a mama moose come tearing up through those quakies like that. And it was like, and it was just like coming right at us. And we were just like, get out of here. So we get running and I don't know how far we ran, maybe a quarter of a mile or something. And uh, we, I was in, I was behind. And so I was looking, kind of looking back as we were running. And uh, so we, we stopped, cut our breath and, 
And we were just huffing and puffing. We we're like, oh, man, that was the scariest thing ever. And I was like, and uh, I can't remember what, what the conversation was like, but Trent was like, I asked if we, if we, if I should get my gun out. And I was like, no, no gun. You run in that scenario. And I thought you said run. I said, yeah, run. And he's like, oh, okay. Cause I wasn't sure if a gun would do anything. I was like, I don't think you're a little handgun. I think it was like a nine millimeter or something would do much against a, a moose, you know, other than maybe scare it if you fired it. But I was like, no run. So anyway, so that was kind of the, uh, the high point of the trip as far as adrenaline and fear and everything um, was being chased by a mama moose. Yeah, the wolf tracks were scary. Yeah, the bear track was scary. And, and you know, leaving food in the tent. But um, the moose was the overall scariest thing, getting chased by that moose. And I really don't want to ever encounter a mama moose like that again. So uh, if you're ever hiking out in the in the woods and you ever come across a cow and a calf moose keep your distance and keep your eyes on that mom so um, and do some research on because i don't know what the proper um, procedure is to to uh safe to keep safe from from moose i think it's just keep your distance and try not to startle them and i don't know if it was the deer that startled it and thought and so the mama moose thought we are coming after it or what but that's kind of what I think is that that deer jumping out of the bushes and and startling us, it startled startled the moose and it come come after us. So anyway, so after that, the the hike back was pretty much uh, uneventful. We uh, made it back to the car, made it back home safe and sound, obviously, and um, it was an adventure for sure. So that was the story behind the photograph. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Be sure to comment, give me a thumbs up, let me know how you liked it. And to follow up here, yesterday I was on the Finessology podcast with Allie Reed and Farrah Plyley. And in that podcast, I said I'd be giving away a print or a photo shoot for one lucky winner. So I'm going to give you the details on what we're doing for that. So. It's not going to be this exact photo, this print here, but it'll be this photo. This one is actually cropped, so uh, I'll, I'll do a, a non-crop version. It's going to be a 12 by 24 metal print, so it's nice and it's got a nice reflection and super glossy and just looks really good on metal. The colors are just super vibrant. I'm going to give a 12 by 24 metal print away of either that or the table mount. I'll let you guys choose which one you want because I like both of them. And um, so that's the option for the print. And then the photo shoot, we're going to do, It's you can do a photo shoot, which is going to be a 30-minute session, and you get five digitals. I'll, I'll uh, link my website to the details on photo shoots there. Or I'm going to throw in another option to do a one-minute promo video. So if you're a fitness competitor or uh, you know, a pole athlete or aerial, aerial silks or aerial hoop or any of my circus friends. I'm going to give you a 30 minute shoot or excuse me, a one minute video shoot. And that's not one minute. That's not the length of the shoot. That's the length of the video. So the shoot's usually 30 to 45 minutes to an hour. Depends on, uh, depends on what we're shooting. So that's going to be the options. Now to win this photo shoot or print or video shoot, what you need to do is comment on my Instagram post at Casey Grimley. You're going to uh, you're going to comment on the post that's got this photo on it that I just posted today to promote this podcast. You're going to comment, would you rather come across a bear or a pack of wolves in the wild? So comment below on what you'd rather come across and tell me why. Or just tell me which one. Either one that that works. For me, I think I'd rather come across a bear in the wild. Um, they seem to they, they could spook off easier. I think a pack of wolves is uh, a little bit more intimidating. So I don't know why I wasn't scared, more scared of the wolves than I was of, of seeing that bear track. Maybe it was because I figured the wolves had eaten dinner already, you know, and they tracked down a deer and he had eaten dinner. At least I hope they'd eaten dinner. But uh, so yeah, I, 
that's the that's the um, the rule. So, uh, oh yeah, and follow. You have to be following me at Casey Grimley, and you have to follow the Finesseology podcast. So go to their page. I'll link them. I'll uh, tag them in the in the comments here or in the description, and you have to go follow their uh, their Instagram page as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Again, this is the story behind the photograph. Till next time, bye.